All right, we're back out here for another weekend. Um, luckily, we actually got a full two days this time. Just Get for it. this weekend. Yeah, just for this weekend. <laughs> we're a little late start out here. It's past lunch already. Um, I feel like I say this excuse every weekend, but we're tired. <laughs> so It's true every weekend. Yeah, every single weekend. But... We got some uh, new parts that came in, grounding cables, main breaker and stuff, so I still feel pretty confident about finishing this weekend. Maybe get a breaker turned on. And uh, yeah, we get to play around with this new lens that Paige got me. Check this out. This is a new 16 to 35 instead. So I was running the 17 to 28 before, but this is a little bit nicer. A little I hated, bit nicer. hated about <laughs> 17 to 24. Yeah. Terrible focal length. <laughs> It never quite got me punched in as much as I wanted to. The that was 17 like... looked weird, and Lightroom could never find the <laughs> automatic lens corrections for that lens. Never. And um, uh, 24 is not enough. Yeah. You need you need a 16 to 34, or 35, I'm sorry. Yeah. You need a 16 to 35. It's, it's, it's nice. Point. It's nice. I'm, I'm liking it so far. Mm -hmm. I bet um, it's going to be sharper, too. Yeah, and we got another little toy here, too, that... It's a little tripod mount. Let me see if I can unscrew it. So that way, when I'm doing some photos and stuff for us, I can actually, oh gosh, if I don't mess this up, but actually take it, swing it on the tripod into a portrait mode. That probably looks crazy on the horizontal video, but yeah, so we got some new toys to play with. Yep. All right, let's get to it. We're, we're running by. <laughs> see it a little bit flowing around coffee. Coffee. See the snow? Yeah, you can see it. This is one random cloud. Right here. I don't even know if you can see that. Otherwise, it's tank top weather, as you can see. Yeah. I wish you could see it out there. There we go. There we go. You can kind of you can kind of see the snow coming in. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
I decided that what I'm going to do first is go ahead and try to connect my grounding cable to the chassis while I still have some daylight. Um, but it's pretty sketch. I got to drill a pretty big hole, uh, like an inch wide, through the floor over here. And I think it's going to line up perfect with a good location, but you never know if your measurements are off. So, well, here we go. <laughs> so, I'm going to start with a small drill bit, and hopefully, we land in a good spot. All right, so I am under here, and this is right behind the passenger side uh, tires. This is the battery box, actually. So right between this gap is what I was going for, and the two holes over there, that's just bare metal. Um, there's no, no holes there, but this one is the one I drilled. So. It's a good perfect location for connecting to somewhere right here on this frame, right here. So, sweet. I think we're going to be good. Whew. And kind of my goal is there's plenty of locations where the, the frame of the bus, like where we're living, <laughs> is connected to the chassis. But I'm probably, I have some leftover number two welding cable. So I'm probably going to connect like two leads of that to the actual, the frame of the, the shell too. Just to make sure there's a good ground going back to the chassis, which is where all of our electrical circuits are connected. I want to make sure we're as safe as we can possibly be, especially with a full metal skin bus and little kids hopefully running around in the future. Or even the dogs. So, yeah, let's go drill this hole. frame right there so it's actually a perfect length I almost made it got it too short so yeah yep 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 so let me go get a wire brush so I can grind that part down a little bit and get the paint off and then uh, we'll drill a hole and then get a bolt up in there Strapped into place. 
and some foam put in. All right, so this is our little setup. We got the two puppos. We got a heater going. We are ready to work. say they're on. So, we have our inverters are working. We got a small draw from the batteries for the idle wattage of these both, both of these inverters. 
Wow. It's pretty incredible. Let's just check our main lights. <laughs> so we got 120 at one line. 120 at the other. And 240 across both lines. Okay, so. I'm very happy with the progress we've made today. Um, so we got both inverters uh, tied into shore power. Shore power has not been plugged in and tested yet, but they are in fact working. Uh, the batteries, Lynx distributor, the shunt, inverters are all tied to the servo and the servo is working on the monitor. So to kind of keep the inverters from pulling energy tonight, because um, it looks like the batteries are only like a 50% say to charge. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put them in charger mode. No reason to be using the inverter, especially with this open over here. Um, kind of still a dangerous zone right now. So I get our control panel on tomorrow. So, yeah. Um, tomorrow we're going to try to plug into shore power. Make sure that it can accept shore power properly. Um, and we can work with dog bone connectors for standard 15 and 30 amp connections and yeah um, I'm super excited to test that and then I'm gonna try to wire in one breaker I have a external outlet um, that I'll show you tomorrow that I'm gonna wire up near where our fridge is gonna go and we're gonna hopefully order a fridge in before our trip in a few weeks to Germany so I'm super excited uh, <laughs> Honestly, now that it's powered on, this is this wasn't so bad, really. I just was super nervous because of how expensive this system is. But really wasn't that bad. I'll be really, really happy to get shore power connected, all that working, get the extension for the HMI to put on my wall above what will be my desk over here, and then start working on getting a bed frame over all this expensive equipment. So that way it's safe and out of the way and there's no chance of us touching it. So... Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, super excited, but I'm going to go to bed, and then tomorrow we will get back at it. Yeah. Okay, so it's even colder today, and now the snow is really coming down. Yeah, it looks beautiful, but yeah, it's snow, so letting the dogs use the bathroom and then we're all gonna come in here hang out in the bus cause it's gonna be warmer in here and we're gonna focus on figuring out how to get the shore power working so here we go Hello. Oh my gosh, so cold. Yeah, and snowy. And snowy. Oh. <laughs> my life's worse. <laughs> Alright, good afternoon. It is next weekend. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't even remember what happened last weekend, but I never closed the video out. We were kind of in a hurry. We only had 
one day. Yeah. You, you worked, was it Saturday or Sunday? It was Saturday. You worked Saturday, and same this weekend. Yeah. Today's Sunday, you worked Saturday. So, I mean, it only makes sense since you only had one day to combine the two videos. Yeah, we're going to combine these two. So, but that's okay. Last weekend, um, you were running into an issue with shore power. Yeah. And that's kind of where we ended it. It got really dark, and we couldn't use the power for the lights. So, basically, it was completely dark in here anyways. You couldn't see anything. So, no point in really getting the camera out. Yeah. So, today, we're going to try to figure out what's going on with the shore power. Uh, I'm going to finish wiring up this outlet over here to kind of just have that one ready to go for some more testing. And we also ordered a fridge. So, Yay. no exact date on when that's coming in, but it should be before the 21st. So, we should have a fridge soon, too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so we're going to get started doing that, try to use up the rest of this weekend, and then maybe next weekend we'll get a full two day. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Whenever we left off last Sunday night, tell us about the trouble you were running into with the batteries. Um, the first issue we were having is we want to have the ability to hook this up to any sort of shore power. So that's 240 split phase, 30 amp single connection, as well as like a 15 or 20 amp connection. And when Current Connected programmed these, they had the toggle on in the parameters for switches group, which means that the inverters have to be looking for the same exact uh, input as they can output. So that would have been the 240 split phase. You do have the ability to turn off the switches group, which could be totally fine. Um, but I'm trying to make a dog bone connector work, which a dog bone connector is taking a single leg of power and putting it into two legs, which won't really work for this because these are in split phase. So two legs, different phases of one another. But the switches group, switch as group unchecked should allow uh, the second inverter to ignore that input and the first inverter to actually take it and either use it or send it back to the batteries. But <clears throat> it looked like that started to work because shore power was coming in. However, there is no power going back to the batteries at all. So um, I need to get back into the software and check the charging parameters that Current Connected set up to make sure those are correct as well. And that's kind of where we're at. So until we can get the shore power 100% fixed where it's charging the batteries up, we can't really leave this system on um, at all during the week while we're not here. So that's what we need to get fixed. I might have found what our issue was. Let's see if I can make this. I can't make it any bigger. So here is that switches group that I toggled last weekend. And here's your two separate inverters. So if I go to the L1 inverter, all of the charging parameters were set up correctly for these lithium batteries. However, if you go over to the inverter side, this ground relay, when you have a split phase system, only one inverter is allowed to have a single grounding location. So this was toggled on for the first inverter. However, it was toggled on on the second inverter as well. So I did go in here already and actually toggle that off. So charging parameters look good. Ground relay toggled off on the second one. And I think that was the issue for us not getting our charger function. So I'm gonna exit this file and it already saved it to this here this remote file. We're going to upload it. We're going to let that configure. 
And once that's done, I think it's going to want us to actually cycle power to the entire system with the, using the servo. And then the new parameter should be logged. Yes! It's working! Look! Look! Come on, focus! Oh, let me get it to focus. Come on. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Oh, that's incredible. Okay, so the final missing piece, after I did that download for the to configure the properties correctly, um, it looked like the servo actually needed to be updated. So I updated the servo. And then after that, it was actually looking for the inverters to be updated. And once they completed their update and then rebooted their... Um, or then they rebooted uh, yeah the shore power charging started working so it's just beautiful I have it set to like 11 amps right now and it's pulling in 1100 watts and charging the batteries up so once the batteries reach full state of charge we can uh, sync our shunt to 100% and this will be perfect this is absolutely fantastic you can hear a little humming, but it's not too bad, honestly. It's not too bad, especially once we get all this other... the bed platform and the bed on top of this. Alright, so now we just need to let this charge. And we can go back to... We could probably just turn this to charger only. <laughs> That way we don't have any AC output, so that way we can wire in that one outlet we have. So, and we can do some tests there too. So I'm going to try to swap this to only charger only. Lizzie just brought us. Gross. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so I just set them. I just set the shunt at 100%. It's still charging because the float voltage doesn't trigger until 57.6 volts. Um, but we need to go ahead and go. So what I'm going to do for this weekend, because I can't monitor all these uh, AC currents and stuff, I'm going to actually turn off the inverters, unplug the shore power to be safe, and then just leave the DC side on. So it definitely has plenty of power to cover any sort of like draw from the servo this weekend. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now. We're going to take this guy, turn it off. And there went all our power in the rig. We turn the light on. Okay. We go back to pages. Now the servo is only pulling 5 watts. So we're going to leave the system like this. That way it's safe, it's not going to damage the batteries, and next weekend we can test uh, making sure that the battery sensors that we have in here under the battery CAN bus connection is... Um, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Actually using this battery temperature, which they're at 58 degrees right now, and sending that signal to the inverter so that way it doesn't try to charge them when they're under, uh, when they're below freezing. So that's like the last thing I want to double check next weekend before we just leave this stuff on um, forever. So, all right, we're going to leave it just like this. All right, so that's it for this weekend. So this video will be a combination of those two weekends and... Hopefully next weekend I'll get a longer one. Alright. See you then.